Matthew 21, 43, part three. We are still at this thing, okay? Matthew chapter 21, the entire chapter, is speaking of Israel failing to bring forth fruit and being replaced. John the Baptist came on the scene and warned Israel of being unfruitful. He threatened to cut down the tree. Jesus comes along next. He comes after John and he curses the fig tree and tells it, let no more fruit grow on you henceforth forever. And then he gives us the parable of the two sons. One son said he would not go and ended up doing the works, being fruitful. The second snobby little son, Israel, who said they would agree to the law of Moses on Mount Sinai, which failed that son did not do the will of God. So we see the vineyard also in Matthew chapter 21 of the owner, which is God, entrusting Israel with his law. They failed to bring him fruit. By the time John the Baptist and Jesus came on the scene, Israel still wasn't fruitful. Okay, so those are the same people now that killed the prophets. They killed the prophets. They killed the messengers. They killed the servants and they failed to bring forth fruit. So what would the landowner do to those miserable, wicked servants? He'll take the kingdom from them and give it to their neighbor who is better than them. And that is going into the other nations. Matthew 21, 43 literally tells you that the kingdom shall not be given to Israel, but be taken from Israel and given to a, another nation. And that word nation actually means Gentile heathen nation people so questions my question to you is how come you guys don't study most of you you all over the bishops classes and you do not have a full understanding of matthew 21 43 and why they say it's the northern kingdom is because bishop nathaniel and all these Israelite camps do not talk about it. They avoid Matthew 21, 43. There is no classes live right now going on about Matthew 21, 43. I've been listening for over a whole year, going on two years, and they never bring out Matthew 21, 43. Because Matthew 21, 43, can't no puppy break that down. OK, and all of you mediocre, understudied little puppies, little sissies, little emoji posting sissies cannot break that down because your leaders fail to break that scripture down. Matthew 21 is exactly the same as second Ezra chapter one. It is speaking of the kingdom going to another nation. Another nation who never seen prophets, who never witnessed miracles, which never was called by his name. This is going into a Gentile heathen nation. And it only makes sense for this nation to be Ishmael. If we look at the exaltation of Mary. OK, she literally said that he had hope in his servant Israel. OK, and remember the covenant of Abraham. So when the covenant collapsed in Israel, Abraham had to come to the rescue with his son, Ishmael. Ishmael was the firstborn son, the son of the hated who did not receive the double portion along with Esau, along with Manasseh. There's many scriptures in the Bible where exceptions were given for some sons. But according to the law, the firstborn son was supposed to receive the double portion. And guess who was the firstborn son that received the double portion? Now it is Ishmael. Ishmael has the double portion. Why? Because Ishmael 
has the prophet like unto Moses, Mohammed, peace and blessings be upon him. Now, I'm just talking to you all. I'm not throwing scriptures out because many times I want to stay on the same topic of Matthew 21, 43. And sometimes I get off because there's so much we can talk about. There's so many precepts that go with Matthew 21, 43. But in Matthew 21, 43, going into verse 44, it talks about the stone that the builders rejected. Now, most of you little Israelites, minutes, minds is only focused on Jesus. Y'all just like the Christian church, y'all just organized. But the stone that the builders rejected is talking about the nation of Ishmael. Ishmael and his mom, Hagar, was both cast out. OK, and they were gathered in Isaiah 54, okay, the Bible talks about there's more children coming from the nation of Ishmael than of the married wife, which is Israel. Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world right now. It's still the fastest growing religion in the world. All right, Ishmael is that fruitful nation we are bringing forth the fruits thereof it's not the northern kingdom okay and when y'all say the northern kingdom y'all don't mean it y'all really mean the southern kingdom okay and i hear some of y'all actually saying that matthew 21 43 is is maybe an error that maybe it was added in the Bible. Then I'm hearing some of y'all say that when the kingdom was taken from Israel and given to the northern kingdom, it literally means that now the kingdom is open to the northern kingdom. You guys do not have a clue of what you're talking about, and you wouldn't stand a chance with a Muslim in a Bible debate. And y'all be the main ones running your mouths on people's channels. But when we show you scripture, you run and you disappear. So I challenge you all to go get counsel from your officer or maybe your captain or your deacon and get some counsel before you open your mouth. OK, before you type some stuff that you're going to have to regret. OK, the kingdom was taken from Israel. This is seen in the story of Vashti. Vashti did not come when she was called. So she was replaced. King Saul, which was a head taller than all the men of Israel. He failed as a king. OK, and the kingdom was taken from him and given to David, which is a type and shadow of Mohammed. OK, David and his ten thousands, Mohammed and his ten thousands. Mohammed name means praised one. And David comes from the tribe of praise. David actually means beloved and beloved is one of the other names of the prophet. OK, this is singing Song of Solomon or Song of Solomon. I call it Song of Solomon because he is that prophet that came on the scene by himself, that God gave that same respect that he gave unto Moses, but double. And I say double because he is the last. Remember, the Bible says the first shall be last and the last shall be first. OK, now is his turn. Now it's Ishmael's turn. It's his turn. And now we have that prophet like unto Moses, who is the water from the rock. OK, because he was in the cavity of the cave, receiving the revelation from the angel Gabriel. All right. He is that water that came from the rock. OK, he is that water that came from the donkey's jawbone. There's many types and shadows of this same story. It repeats itself. There's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. History constantly repeats itself, constantly repeats itself. If you read through the Old Testament, you'll see that Israel was always threatened with God taking the kingdom from them. And it actually happened. 
Jesus told the nation of Israel that he did not give the kingdom to the northern kingdom. When they asked about restoring the kingdom to them, he said, it's not for you to know. OK, he went over it with them. He told them the kingdom was going to be taken from them, but they didn't get it. They did not get it. They was like faulty. OK, when Saul's daughter was given to faulty and then when David came and snatched her up, he just didn't get it. He just kept running after her like, baby, come back to me. He didn't get it until Abner told him, get back home, get back home. OK, and that's what y'all doing right now. Y'all having an identity crisis. We got some of y'all looking like straight up Edomites and no disrespect to Edom. OK, but some of y'all looking white than a mug and y'all claiming y'all Israelites. OK, some of y'all have no proof at all that you even come from anything that's Israel and you all over it. Why? Because another man told you it. You don't respect what the prophet Muhammad said. OK, he is the seal of the prophets. There is no messengers. There is no more prophets no more. And I'm simply just talking to y'all free handed with my Bible open and giving you history on Israel. There's a parable in Matthew chapter 21. In Matthew chapter 21, there is a certain landowner, okay? And to give you the revelation of it, he entrusted the nation of Israel with his law. And they did nothing but kill the messengers. Every time he sent to collect the fruit, the good works, they would kill the messengers, instead of repenting, they would kill the messengers. OK, last of all, they kill the air. OK, and I interpret that as Zechariah because he said the blood of Abel and Zechariah is going to be laid upon this generation. They blew it when they killed Zechariah. OK, they killed that man. And now the landowner is coming. OK, and what is he going to do with those miserable, wicked servants? OK, he's going to kill them and he's going to give his kingdom to someone who is nothing like them. He's going to give it to another nation. Matthew chapter 21, the whole entire chapter is speaking of good works, which is fruits and about something going to someone else something that belonged to israel is now going to someone else this is what isaiah said this is what ezekiel said this is what ezra said this is what moses said this is what jesus said all the prophets prophesied of this and this is why they were killed now isaiah was very bold he was very bold. Isaiah literally said that he was sought by them that didn't ask for them. Wow, that's not Israel. That's not the northern kingdom. So breathe. Take it in. The kingdom is gone. OK, take a breather. Take a breather. She is gone. The kingdom is gone. All right. It's not yours. No more. OK, it's not the northern kingdoms and it's not the southern kingdoms. The kingdom does not belong to you anymore. You have an opportunity to repent. All right. And you can be a part of the kingdom of God that God set up on earth. This was Jesus prayer when he said, thine will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You have a chance to be a part of the kingdom of God on earth right now. That's how merciful God is. But you have to accept Islam. That's the only way. That's the only way. And so my question to you is tell me where it says in the Bible that the kingdom 
is going to be open to the northern kingdom. Show me in the Bible where Jesus said the kingdom is going to be given to Judah. Show me in the scriptures that I don't want your own words and I don't want you teaching me Hebrew. OK, because the Bible is written in Hebrew and the New Testament is written in Greek. OK, and Jesus spoke Aramaic. So don't be trying to make me say Yahweh shy. OK, we don't have a pure language. We don't. And none of that is important. We have the language of the prophet. If you want to learn that, which is Arabic. OK, so get off of all that bull crap. That don't make no sense trying to make somebody speak Hebrew when the New Testament is written in Greek and Jesus spoke Aramaic. That don't even make sense. And the Hebrew y'all speaking is a watered down version. OK, it is a watered down version. It is not the original. And none of those make any sense. That just tells you how gone y'all are. Y'all y'all so gone. That you can't digest the first part of Matthew 21, 43, when Jesus said the kingdom shall be taken. You can't digest that. You can't get it. That devil will not let you get that. Instead, you're making up all these other doctrines and explanations when you can't deal with the first part. It shall be taken from you all right and this is all because of y'all bishops man y'all bishops don't talk about this y'all elders so-called elders don't go over this they avoid these type of topics they avoid jeremiah 8 8 and they avoid all these scriptures that talks about the kingdom going to another nation instead they focused on them feast days they focused on the sabbath days they focused on alms yeah yeah talking about the christian church so bad but they all about alms all about it all right so bring somebody to the comments who actually is well versed and well studied and we can go over the kingdom of God being taken from Israel and given to a fruitful nation. Okay. All right. Shalom.